testing. Is this better? Yes. Okay. And I'll try and avoid the feedback here. Um, otherwise, I'll deafen my reporter and I don't want to do that. <laughs> okay. Uh, Let's try this. Um, thank you for coming. This is the second set of public participation hearings here on Diablo Canyon. So before we start the formal thing, I want to kind of do a formal introduction. Who was at the prior set of public participation hearings? Oh, okay. So pardon me repeating myself, but I'm going to give a similar introduction for those uh, who weren't here. First off, I want to thank everyone for coming out. Uh, this is my chance and the Commission's chance to hear from people in the community about their concerns, uh, real world concerns, as opposed to the papers I usually read, which are prepared by attorneys and economists, who sometimes have worthwhile things to say, but um, this is a different perspective and it's very valuable to us. Um, President Picker would have liked to have been here today, but could not make it, so he sends his regards. Um, I think he also misses, regrets missing the farmer's market. <laughs> so uh, for people who want to speak, there is a sign-up at the table by the front. Um, we will take an order of speaking in order you've signed up. In general, we have um, elected officials, government officials speak first. Because um, they may have other things and or maybe speaking for more than just themselves. Um, if any of them want to speak later, they're welcome to do that. Because we have a lot of people signing up, um, I am asking that people observe a three minute time limit. We have a timer here. Um, I'm not going to cut you off in the middle of a sentence, but if you could kind of take that as a signal to wrap things up, that would be appreciated. Uh, we do have a court reporter here who will be taking down what people say, and there will be a transcript that will be available to me and the commissioners for the references. Reference. Um, so if you can speak clearly and not too quickly, that's most appreciated. Um, what's going to happen here today is I'm here to listen. So there's no presentations. Um, it's not a discussion. If you have questions for PG&E, for example, there are representatives here from PG&E. If some of those could raise their hand, okay, we have several here. Um, they may be able to help you. If you do want to have a conversation with them, please take it to the back or outside so it doesn't disrupt the hearing. If you have questions about PUC processes, we have a number of people here from the Public Advisor's Office with the PUC. They were the ones who at the sign-up table. Um, if you have questions about PUC processes, they can help you with that. Again, if you can take it over by the side, that would be helpful. With that, also, so what you can do to come forward is come forward to this table, and Mr. Claybrook, the Public Advisor's Office, will have a microphone uh, that people can use. Um, and You'll also be running the timer, so you can just come up to the table, give your speech, and, and um, so I have a list, and I'll start calling names of who will come up first. If someone who's gone before has fundamentally said what you agree with, you don't have to repeat it all. You can just say, I agree with the woman in the brown dress who said they should paint flowers on it, whatever. Um, Feel free to do that. Uh, I want to try and make sure that everyone has a chance to speak. So uh, with that, I'm going to shift into the formal mode of this public participation hearing and announce this is the public participation hearing in application 1608006. Application of Pacific Gas Electric Company for approval of the retirement of the Diablo Canyon Power Plant implementation of the joint proposal and recovery of associated costs through proposed rate-making mechanisms. I am Administrative Law Judge Peter Allen. With that, we will start with 
First up is Adam Hill, followed by Ron Alsop and Katie Lichter. Good afternoon, Judge Allen. I'm Adam Hill from the Board of Supervisors. Um, I represent the third district in which the uh, plant uh, resides. Um, here to, you know, to uh, to support the joint proposal, of course, that the county is part of. Um, also, wanted to express some concerns that I've heard throughout our community, as uh, essentially since the last time you were here, and as people have become more aware of the process and more aware of the joint proposal itself. Obviously, there are a lot of people in the community that wish the plant weren't closing um, because of the impact it will have on our economic situation and also the impact it may have on our environmental situation. There are people who are glad that the plant has, is closing and some people who would prefer that it close sooner. Um, I think that I've heard genuinely in terms of environmental concerns uh, a couple of errors, one of which is um, if in fact the plant were to um, be taken offline sooner than the agreement or uh, uh, even when the agreement happens that it will lead to a spike in greenhouse gas emissions such as what happened in San Onofre when they shut that down. That remains a great concern, especially in a state that has basically committed itself to be 100% renewable. renewable. We have seen uh, since San Onofre closed the greenhouse gas emissions continue to go up. Um, other concerns that are of, 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 you know, of, of, I think, great importance to our community is not necessarily the PUC's area, but something that we are concerned about in terms of being able to continue our emergency services is the amount of spent fuel that will remain at the site even after, after the decommissioning process. Uh, understand that this is a federal situation and, quite frankly, a federal failure to address this properly. Nonetheless, on one of the most beautiful parts of the coast of California, we will have a nuclear waste dump. And that is not just a um, thing that bothers people in their mind, it is something that concerns people because we live in a seismically active area and because that was never part of the deal when the plant was cited and, and licensed to begin with. And so we do hope that the PUC will make its decision in favor of the joint proposal as it has been um, agreed upon. Uh, we. In the community, many of our economic development groups are working together. The cities, the county, um, special districts, the schools, certainly, we are working together to be able to absorb as best we can the, the uh, obvious financial blow that will occur from this. Um, but the, the agreement itself, the time, the monies, give us an ability to be able to get to a place where um, we think we can do a pretty good job and it won't be as problematic as something immediate would be. So again, we really appreciate you coming to listen to our community, and we hope to hear uh, something soon on the joint proposal itself. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mr. Alsa, followed by Katie Wittig, followed by Deborah Garcia. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, Judge Allen. My name is Ron Alsa, Emergency Services Manager with the San Luis Obispo County Office of Emergency Services. Uh, my key role is to ensure the safety of the public of uh, San Luis Obispo County and our region through emergency planning and response, including in this case through a nuclear power plant emergency planning for Diablo Canyon. Now, emergency planning requirements, particularly those put out by the NRC and FEMA, are extremely complex and challenging and, and require us to do a pretty extensive emergency planning process. I'd um, also like to note uh, this is not just a county of San Luis Obispo plan. In our particular case, we have what is we believe and understand is unique to the nation and that we have one joint emergency plan that covers uh, the five incorporated cities that are within the emergency planning zone, and also um, the various uh, special districts. In fact, we have uh, 24 agencies other than the county that uh, we uh, pass this funding through, state funding that I'll mention here in a moment, and 17 county departments who are part of the off-site response organization or reimbursed for their costs. Um, the uh, legislation I reference regarding funding is a state bill that requires uh, nuclear power plant operators to reimburse off-site local agencies as well as two state agencies currently for their emergency planning costs related to nuclear power plants, in this case, of course, PG&E for Diablo Canyon. However, that law also this states it is for operating nuclear power plants. So when Diablo ceases operations, that is when they, for simple terms, turn off the switch, even though there will still be fuel in the reactor before they remove it, our funding source, per that law, stops. However, the emergency planning will need to continue and in fact, in draft new rulemaking by the, by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, EP would continue for a longer period than the NRC has authorized plants that have already ceased operating. Um, that includes some off-site response planning. 
um, as part of the draft new rulemaking, NRC references and NRC staff found that, quote, that the event sequences important to risk of decommissioning sites are limited to large earthquakes and cast drop events. This is in the context of spent, spent fuel, including a spent fuel cool storage. And I uh, won't have to say any more about the earthquake uh, and threats and faults in our area. Related to overall emergency planning, that is, our non-nuclear power plant emergency planning, we have limited resources to do our spawn population base. Unlike large urban areas, we do not have other emergency planning resources to, to draw from. We are reliant on the nuclear power plant emergency uh, um, funding to keep up uh, extensive emergency plans for the Apple Canyon. Thus, the settlement agreement will allow us to continue to keep our community safe, um, including during the decommissioning process where there are spent fuels on site. Thank you. Ms. Liptig, then Ms. Garcia, and Garrett Olson. Your Honor, my name is Katie Liptig. I'm the City Manager for the City of San Luis Obispo. And I'm here representing not only the city, but also the coalition of cities, which includes the cities of Arroyo Grande, Atascadero, Morro Bay, Paso Robles, Pismo Beach, and San Luis Obispo. On behalf of the coalition of cities, I want to express our full support for the joint proposal and respectfully request that it be approved in its current form. The joint proposal is notable in several ways. It is the result of many hours of good faith negotiations by all parties that were thoughtful and extraordinarily candid in their negotiations. It constructively addresses the significant and genuine needs of the many and varied stakeholders with respect to public safety, education, the economy, and our environment. It ensures that the plant continues to operate safely through the rest of its operational tenure, and it addresses the impacts of Diablo's to, on Diablo's employees, as well as the impact on the region's residents and businesses. You are no doubt aware of PG&E's analysis of Diablo Canyon's economic impact on the region, 3,300 jobs from virtually every sector, and hundreds of billions of dollars of direct induced economic impact. Based on our current news, this is a potential economic hurricane for the Central Coast. The good news is that with your approval of the joint proposal, there is time to prepare for this hurricane, and I am confident that working together, we will thrive after the closure. Under the first part of the proposal that provides funding for the county, the coalition of cities, school districts, and many other agencies, um, the county and San Luis Coastal, uh, PG&E has agreed to $75 million of essential services mitigation fund to offset the likely negative impacts to essential services provided by the community, uh, by the school district, the county, the cities, and many other jurisdictions. This funding will be distributed to the county in nine equal installments through 2025. The county will then just redistribute it to the local agencies whose budgets will be impacted by the inevitable decrease of unitary tax funding as a result of Diablo's closure. This is fair and appropriate. The second part is $10 million in economic development to ease the local economic impacts that are caused by the plant's anticipated closure. The purpose of these funds are to provide the county and cities with seed money to study immediate localized impacts, identify redevelopment opportunities, and take action to create new economic bases before Diablo closes. In closing, I will uh, ask you to um, consider that a strong and vibrant Central Coast economy is important not only for the residents and businesses of the Central Coast, but to PG&E's entire service territory, and I would argue all Californians. On behalf of the Coalition of Cities, our elected officials, our communities, and our citizens, I urge you to approve the joint proposal. Deborah Garcia, followed by Garrett Olson, followed by Jocelyn Brennan. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Um, my name is Deborah Garcia. I'm the Management Services Director for the City of Pismo Beach. And I have the privilege of speaking today on behalf of the City of Pismo Beach, a member city of the Coalition of Cities. 
The Diablo Canyon plant is a major contributor to our economy, and many businesses have come to rely on the positive, direct, and indirect economic impacts the facility has created over the years. The impending closure of the plant has the potential to be devastating to our economy. We appreciate this opportunity to share our comments on the impact and solutions that will give cities and the county a fighting chance to maintain essential services during this ramp down and to invest in economic development strategies to ease the economic impacts. To provide a specific examples for our community, we conducted an analysis to determine could you not be near that speaker? It seems to interfere with a wireless microphone. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. To provide a specific examples for our community, we conducted an analysis to determine the fiscal and economic impact of the PG&E Diablo Canyon nuclear power plant closure to the city of Pismo Beach. Based on this data, our analysis finds an estimated community cumulative impact of $18.7 million to the overall city of Pismo Beach economy from 2017 to 2025. The ongoing impact following closure is estimated to be $4.5 million per year lost to the overall economy starting in 2025. This is a huge impact for a community of 8,200 people. According to the joint Cal Poly and pg and &E economic benefits of Diablo Canyon power plant study, there are 73 Diablo jobs held by Pismo Beach residents with an average salary of 145, 145,000 for a total of just over 10 million of annual income. Again, the loss of this income will have a huge impact on stores and restaurants in our community. There are several properties in our city that provide lodging to Diablo staff and to consultants for ongoing operations and outages at Diablo. The hotel revenue loss is estimated at 70,000 per year this year, increasing to almost 600,000 loss in fiscal year 2025. That's a cumulative loss of 3.1 million over a nine year period. Again, we estimate a total ongoing economic loss of 4.5 million per year to the Pismo Beach economy beginning 2025 with impacts anticipated far before that. The CPUC has the unique opportunity to recognize that closures of this type can uh, irreparably harm communities. Pismo Beach urges your support of the joint proposal and appreciates your consideration of these solutions that will give cities and the county a fighting chance to maintain essential services during this ramp down and to invest in economic development strategies to ease the economic impacts. Thank you for this opportunity to comment today on behalf of the city of Pismo Beach. Karen Olson, Karen Olson, followed by Jocelyn Brennan, followed by Rick London. Good afternoon, Your Honor. My name is Garrett Olson. I'm the fire chief with the city of San Luis Obispo, uh, and it's my honor to be here today to formally represent the city. On behalf of the city of San Luis Obispo, I strongly urge approval of the joint proposal for several reasons. First, for public safety reasons, this proposed agreement is designed to ensure that the plant continues to operate safely for its full 40 years of life. Second, this agreement is aimed at preventing the kind of terrible economic fallout that has happened to other communities our size when a nuclear power plant was closed. I didn't do that on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Although it is a good effect. As just one example of the economic impact, when the main Yankee nuclear power plant was shut down in 1996, Residents of Wigasset, Maine, experienced huge tax increases, saw their high school enrollment drop in half, and saw fees for sewer and utilities services increase substantially. There was no planning for the future in that community, and that community suffered greatly. By contrast, this joint proposal seeks to forestall that kind of economic depression. As other speakers have noted, this joint proposal provides a means for conducting meaningful economic development efforts and provides a cushion to our public schools as they recover from the financial fallout attributed to Diablo's closure and transition to new realities. Third, this joint proposal is based on a foundation of fairness. The residents of the city of San Luis Obispo, along with our neighbors throughout the county, have borne the risk of living with a nuclear power plant in our backyard, a risk that has benefited much of the other Californians who have availed themselves of relatively inexpensive power generated at Diablo. 
in our backyard. Third, this, or excuse me, um, as a matter of fairness, this proposal seeks to ensure that the plant continues to operate uh, safely for the full 40 years of its anticipated life and seeks to ensure that our community can proactively plan for the future with the current economic benefits that Diablo provides in the way of jobs and related economic impacts no longer a part of our future. Finally, and importantly, <coughs> this joint proposal was reached amicably through thoughtful, sometimes contentious, but always good faith negotiations. Again, on behalf of the citizens of the city of San Luis Obispo, our elected officials, our community, our 45,000 residents, I respectfully urge you to approve this joint proposal. Thank you so much. This is Jocelyn Brennan, followed by Rick Linden, followed by Russell Seckler. Um, one note as we go into the rest of the comments, if people who wish to speak are already parties to the proceeding, if you're on the service list as a party representative, or you're representing a group that is a party, you can speak, but I would like you to go last, because we have a lot of people here, this is their opportunity to speak to me. The parties have had a lot of opportunities to talk to me. They have. Um, and so I want to make sure that we get first all the people who have not yet had a chance to uh, speak to me on this case. So um, with that, Ms. Brennan. Thank you. Thank you for being here, Your Honor. Um, I am the District Director for State Assemblyman Jordan Cunningham, who represents the 35th Assembly District, which includes all of San Luis Obispo County and North Santa Barbara County, uh, roughly 500,000 constituents that are affected by this closure. Of course, he wishes he could be here today. He's in Sacramento for the last two days of session, so he sent me to read a letter on his behalf. He says, Dear Judge Allen, Commissioners and President Picker, welcome and thank you for holding this public participation hearing in order to make informed decisions regarding the decommissioning of Diablo Canyon Power Plant. I grew up on the Central Coast. My wife and I have raised our four children on the Central Coast and I represent this area in the State Assembly and as a recent member of the Utilities and Energy Committee. I look forward to working with your commission. The Diablo plant has produced energy for 30 years in our community. The joint proposal ensures an orderly transition which guarantees compliance with California's energy mandates while also providing important economic mitigations for the Central Coast. The interested parties have successfully worked together and the result is a proposal that considers the employees, school districts, special districts, cities, San Luis Obispo County, Office of Emergency Service, Services, the local economic impacts and the environment and statewide energy goals. As Diablo closes and the surrounding communities enter this period of transition, it's vital that we continue to communicate and work, to give, work together to give the people of the Central Coast the best deal possible and also the state of California. Thank you for your consideration. Next up, Rick London, followed by Russell Seckler, Setchler, Seckler, followed by Robert Diaz. Good afternoon, Judge Allen. My name is Rick London, CEO of United Way of San Luis Obispo County. And just to be clear, I just came from a walkathon where we raised quite a bit of money. Uh, so some people don't recognize me because they rarely see me looking like this. Uh, uh, the jacket kind of. Yes. Okay. Uh, on behalf of the Board of Directors of uh, United Way, I didn't come here really to express an opinion on the uh, proposal, but just our profound thank you to PG&E its leadership, uh, rank and file, uh, for their generosity and contribution over many decades here in San Luis Obispo County. Uh, I have personally gotten to know uh, many of them and uh, have tremendous respect for their uh, integr integrity and uh, have a lot of trust in them. I sleep very well at night. Uh, and uh, we just can't thank them enough. So uh, please take that into consideration. Thank you. Mr. Seckler, followed by Robert Diaz, followed by Martin Suits. Good afternoon, Judge, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Russ Seckler. I am the president of Californians for Making America Great Again, which chapter in Santa Barbara County. Uh, your neighbors are here to support you. 
I not only come here representing Santa Barbara County and my organization, but as a 36-year firefighter on the Central Coast, born and raised, I have spent my entire adult life as a public servant. I just wanted to offer up to you some observations, being that firefighter for over 36 years. I've been involved in emergency pre-planning in response to Diablo Canyon. I've also toured the plant in the areas that are not open to the public in those pre-planning stages. I have several friends who operate and work at the Diablo Canyon nuclear power plant. Let's look at wind generation as an alternative. Thousands of acres of oxygen producing trees are clear cut in order to make room for the wind machine, the electrical towers, high voltage lines and service roadways to these. Also there's an increased risk for wildland fire because of these lines. How do I know that? Because I've seen it. I believe the risk of solar power outweigh that of nuclear power. The toxic byproducts of producing solar panels and related wiring are rarely mentioned as part of the agenda of the left. Solar panels installed on homes and commercial buildings significantly increase the risk to firefighters. The procedure we use to cut into roofs in order to reduce heat and smoke and to increase visibility so we can reach injured and dying people inside of those structures is compromised by the placement of these panels on the roof, both commercial and residential. When solar panels fail and reach the end of their life, where will they be disposed of? Nuclear risks are everywhere. I see it every day as a firefighter. We live right next to a missile base that stores nuclear weapons, or did store nuclear weapons. Should we close and dismantle Vandenberg as well? Nuclear medicine devices travel our freeways on the Central Coast every day and are stored in nearly every medical facility. People themselves carry nuclear beads inside their bodies as a treatment for cancer. Should we dismantle all those? None of these devices produce power for the masses, yet we accept them on an everyday basis. Each of these items, both wind and solar, they require the use and disposal of highly toxic chemicals, which produce their own risk to humans and the wildlife. In fact, I understand wind generating machines have been known to kill and injure our national symbol, the American Eagle, as well as many other birds. Together, I believe nuclear, solar, and wind and other technologies may make sense for our future while we wait for time to produce a viable, renewable, clean energy. At the moment, with increases in human population of this planet, killing one to benefit the other is simply selfish and lacks common sense. Thank you, Judge, for your time. Mr. Diaz, followed by Martin Suits, followed by James Swanson. My name is Robert Diaz, and I was not going to say anything, but I'd like to mention something while I'm here is that in the California Valley was a lot of solar panels being put up. About 55 years ago, I, I put a lot of seeds to put flowers in there to hold down the toxic dust that used to be there and used to be dug up. Now, I mean, we, you and I did it. All those four solar panel people are digging up those, that dust and putting it into the air. Thank you. Mr. Suits, followed by James Swanson, followed by Gary Kirkland. Good afternoon. My name is Martin Suits, and I'm a resident of Avila Beach, and I'm here representing San Miguelito Mutual Water District. I wanted to point out that uh, in the, uh, the process of decommissioning the Diablo, we have a direct interest in the lands surrounding Diablo, specifically Wild Cherry Canyon. Our sewage plant is located on that, and we service approximately 1,500 residents and uh, uh, rentals. The lease that we're on, we don't actually own the fee. We're on a lease. PG&E owns the fee. The lease that we're on is both vague and has many defects. In the process of decommissioning, we'd like to uh, have communications and negotiations with PG&E in order to be able to uh, obtain the fee underlying our uh, our sewage plant in order to ass assure us that we will have a uh, future uh, at that location and uh, and also to be able to uh, mitigate the defects that are already in the lease. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Suits. 
Um, you may wish, uh, maybe when there's a break, to talk to one of the PG&E representatives here to make sure that uh, you can start that communication. Actually, I already have. Uh, Excellent. Thank you. Um, Ms. Swenson, followed by Gary Kirkland, followed by Michael Manchin. I, I'd like to test the microphone. Can you hear me back there if I hold it like this? Is that okay? All right. Some of the speakers we couldn't hear very well in the back. Uh, so I'm Jane Swanson. I am very active with the San Luis Obispo Mothers for Peace, but today I'm speaking as an individual. I applaud pg &E's decision to shut down the Diablo Canyon nuclear plant, but I do urge an earlier shutdown date. Uh, I have four reasons I'd like to mention at the moment. Number one, replacement energy from sustainable renewable sources will be abundantly available by 2019 and 2020. So we're advocating a five-year earlier shutdown than pg &E is planning. Second reason is a Diablo is such an aging plant. Its design started about 60 years ago and some of its equipment was procured half a century ago. Although pg &E has updated and replaced much equipment, not all of it, and currently pg &E has out there a, a document stating there are 70, 70 components, more than 70, that they are calling quote, canceled projects, unquote. This is bothersome. It indicates to me that pg &E doesn't want to spend the money to maintain the plant properly and that constitutes both a reliability and a safety risk. So that's a huge concern. Seismic risks, I need not go into that. I'll just briefly say that fewer years of operation means fewer safety risks from a seismic event, should there be one. Uh, the last thing I want to mention is once, once through cooling. Uh, the State Water Resource Control Board has identified Diablo Canyon as responsible for 80% of the man caused uh, damage to the marine life along the coast of California. That is because of the 2.5 billion gallons of ocean water used to cool the plant every single day that both units operate. Not only are larvae impinged or entrained on the sc filtering screens, but that ocean water is heated and pumped back out into the cove 20, 18 to 20 degrees hotter than when it was brought in from the ocean. This has totally changed the uh, population of sea life in the Diablo Cove. So an earlier shutdown date would give the ocean marine environment more of an opportunity to rebound or correct itself. In summary, it's in the best interests of the ratepayers and of the citizens of the state of California to shut down the plant 2019, 2020, instead of the later dates that pg &E proposes. Thank you very much for the opportunity to address you. Thank you. Up uh, next is Gary Kirkland, Michael Manchak, followed by I have the name Peter Candela. Is that a party? Are you are you a party to the proceedings, sir, or no? Okay. Uh, in that case, Gary Kirkland, Michael Manchak, and Peter Candela. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for having me, Alan. Um, what I'm proposing is uh, what I see is this agreement that pg and &E signed is blackmail, and it's an attempt by uh, people who've opposed Diablo Canyon for years to now they want money out of it. And if I were PG&E, I would uh, tell the PUC, if you don't agree with this in total, we're closing tomorrow, and there will be no planning, and there will be no money for any of the cities, counties, or school districts for the, the impact of this closure. As far as uh, the Diablo Canyon goes, the nuclear power plant, I'm totally in favor of keeping it open, not closing it. And I realize I'm, uh, Somebody here in the audience told me the last time I spoke about this that trains already left. Doesn't matter. I'm still in favor. I go after lost causes. And I see nuclear power as a great way to produce energy for the citizens of California and all over the West. Those people who are afraid of radiation should understand that the Earth itself is very highly radioactive and that's what keeps it hot. In fact, if you go into outer space, it's worse because of the sun's radioactivity. There's no way to get away from radioactivity. It's everywhere. It's in this room. And all things 
require risk. And what we should decide when we're going to decide something like this is not based on fear, which is an emotion, but based on reason. We should use the, the example of cause and effect or risk-benefit. If we have a cause that we can't mitigate, can't get away, and the effect is terrible, then we wouldn't do it. But if the uh, benefits outweigh the risks, then we do it. If it doesn't, then we don't. And I submit that Diablo Canyon, running all these years and producing all this electricity and raising the standard of living of people here in California, far outweighs the possible risks of a nuclear accident. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Menchak, followed by Peter Candela, followed by Suzanne Singh. Good afternoon, Your Honor. I have a letter that I've submitted previously, but there's an extra copy for you. Uh, my name is Mike Manchak. I'm the president and CEO of the Economic Vitality Corporation, or EVC. I'm, uh, since 1994, the EVC has served as the voice for the countywide business community. We are a public-private partnership and a 501c3 nonprofit economic development organization that works hand-in-hand -hand with regional government and business leaders to help create jobs, foster countywide investment, and promote local business. On behalf of the EVC's 41 board of directors, including the business leaders and elected officials from throughout the county, I extend my sincere thanks for allowing me this opportunity to support the joint proposal. The closure of the Diablo Canyon nuclear power plant is the biggest incident to impact the region's economy, and the EVC is confident that the joint proposal will help the county address in a meaningful way this truly historic event. In response to PG&E's announcement of the power plant closure, the EVC immediately offered to manage economic planning on behalf of local governments, business, and communities since we have years of experience in doing so, and having been recognized statewide for our existing economic strategy project. The EVC's offer to manage the economic planning of the closure has been officially embraced countywide, and the EVC has since progressed in devising a plan as well as assembling a team of experts to perform this important task of conducting an economic analysis and then developing an economic strategy with local input. Resources are needed to complete this project and resources will be provided upon approval of the joint proposal. Working directly with stakeholders who negotiated the joint proposal, the EVC has created a governance structure for this project that includes an advisory board with members from the education and business sectors, chambers of commerce, cities, and county government. To date, the EVC has initiated an RFP and RFQ process to find the best consulting firm from across the nation. We will soon be hiring a firm as selected by the advisory board, and this will conduct a two-phase project for both an economic analysis and strategy. As an organization that developed and continues to manage a countywide economic strategy, the EVC is honored to serve in this new role, helping to manage, create an assessment of, and develop strategies for what will become the single largest impact of the county's economy, upwards of one, of $1 billion annually. <coughs> PG&E, the largest employer in our county, not only has been a vital partner of the community and supportive to both the EVC and our local other nonprofit agencies, through their charitable programs, but the company has also helped our local economy through economic impacts of its operations and local investments in infrastructure. The closure of Diablo Canyon brings with it uncertainty about the long-term future of our communities and our economy, and while the Central Coast is a desirable place to live and visit, our region has its share of serious issues in addition to the closure, but also we are the sixth least affordable place to live in the nation, and have one of the highest rates of underemployment throughout the United States. In closing, the closure here uh, is going to be devastating loss for our communities and our region as it needs resources to help <coughs> mitigate these impacts. Please approve the joint proposal, which will provide resources needed to support our efforts to plan for a post Diablo economy and determine the best path forward for our communities. Uh, I am also joined here with Lorelei Kappel, the EBC's project director who is managing this project for us at EBC. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
Up next, Peter Candela, followed by Suzanne Singh, followed by Dominic Tartaglia. Hello, I'm Peter Candela, CEO for the Pismo Beach Chamber of Commerce. Uh, there's a lot of things that have already been said, I won't repeat them again, but certainly for this uh, proposal. Uh, I appreciate uh, the fact that you have a half a billion dollars uh, severance package for the employees, important thing uh, when you're, when you're uh, decommissioning an a, uh, asset like this. Um, a, a year lead time uh, certainly gives us enough time to figure out exactly what the economic impact is going to be, and we definitely appreciate that. And then, of course, the $85 million support to our, our uh, county is a, a vital part to offset some of the, uh, some of the uh, economic uh, uh, difficulties that we're going to face forward. I had an opportunity to work closely with PG&A through, uh, through the years of, uh, in my position. I have to say they are an incredible group of people. Um, they will be missed, and uh, we appreciate it. Suzanne Singh, Dominic Tartaglia, Jeff Eccles. Good afternoon, Judge. Thanks for opening this forum for the public today. My name is Suzanne Singh, and I am with the Santa Maria Valley Chamber of Commerce, and I'm their Economic Development Director. The Chamber sees the cooperation between the Commission and PG&E as favorable, but I am also here on behalf of the city manager of Santa Maria, Rick Hayden, who could not be here today, who has given me a statement to read. Economics are a big part of the impact of the closure of Diablo Canyon nuclear power plant. The economic analysis should be complete and not based on political boundaries. As proposed, the current economic study proposes to omit an analysis of the area of Santa Maria. We are the largest city in the bi-county area and are home to a couple of hundred PG&E workers and feel that it's unfortunate that we are not being included in this process, which could potentially lead to an incomplete analysis. The city of Santa Maria will no doubt be directly impacted by the closure of Diablo Canyon as Santa Maria residents constitute a workforce at the plant both directly and indirectly. There are businesses in Santa Maria that support and are supported in part by Diablo Canyon and its economic drivers. The Santa Maria Valley Chamber of Commerce believes that Santa Maria should be included in analysis of the economic impact of a closure and should be a part of any economic negotiation efforts. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Dominic Dartaglia, Jeff Eccles, then I think it's Lindy Owen. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Uh, my name is Dominic Tartaglia, and I'm the Executive Director for Downtown San Luis Obispo. We are a 501c6 Business Improvement Association, and we're comprised of over 600 businesses. In terms of sales tax revenue by our area, our businesses make a substantial impact on the local economy, and they are proud to be considered the heart of this little county. Uh, in our district, we see a tremendous amount of cultural and business uh, activities taking place, and many times those activities also transcend boundaries outside of our our district and to the rest of the Central Coast. Our organization exists with the purpose of fostering economically vibrant downtown, and we do that through promotion of businesses, advocacy, cultural and recreational events, and creating a place that people enjoy. Uh, PG&E has been a part of that for decades, and at one point was even a title sponsor for one of our Keystone events, uh, Concerts in the Plaza, which is a 14-week uh, music festival, and we just finished that last Friday. Uh, it's been years since we've received direct monetary contributions from PG&E, but every day we see the benefits of Diablo Canyon and PG&E staff here on the Central Coast. On Tuesday morning, the Downtown Slow Board of Directors voted unanimously to support the joint proposal as it has been presented. We appreciate the support for our local economy that has been outlined with regard to working towards sustaining growing economy through job retention, training, and economic stimulus as prescribed in the proposal. On behalf of the 600 of business owners and my board of directors, I am asking for your support today in the joint proposal as presented. Your support allows for organizations like mine to work with our local <coughs> leaders to adapt and diversify for our local economy. And thank you for being here today and giving us the opportunity to come and talk to you. Jeff Eccles, followed by Wendy Owen, followed by Tyler. Forgive me if I mispronounce it. It might be Scheit or Sight. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Jeff Eccles. I'm the Director of Economic Development uh, for the Paso Robles Chamber of Commerce. The Paso Chamber represents about 800 members and over 10,000 employees here on the Central Coast. Thank you for the opportunity to comment on the closure plan for Diablo Canyon Power Plant. 
The Paso Robles Chamber of Commerce respectfully urges you to approve the closure plan. In particular, we appreciate the $10 million allocated for economic development efforts. We know the local economy will suffer from a loss of good paying jobs and economic activity the plant brings to our region when the plant is closed. We are grateful the closure agreement acknowledges this fact and provides funds to mitigate the negative economic impact. This agreement allows for the retention of existing power plant employees to ensure the safe operation of the plant while providing funds to help replace jobs that will be gone upon closure. The joint proposal was reached after many hours of collaborative work among the county, the cities, and PG&E. We believe all participants have acted in good faith to reach an agreement that is reasonable and fair to all parties involved. We appreciate your consideration of these facts and respectfully ask that you approve the joint proposal as submitted. Thank you. The other Tyler site, site Ermina Carroll. Good afternoon, Lindy Owen. Um, I live in Los Osos and I am looking forward to the closure of the plant uh, because of the safety issues and um, earthquake potentials that we all have had to kind of live with. Um, I feel like this discussion today is basically about the financial settlements and uh, the law and the financial loss from the closure and the economic impact on our county and the workers. Um, I would sort of say that maybe we became a little addicted to nuclear. Um, and at the end of uh, 40 years of life, I think we need to be looking at what at what could you replace those jobs with. And so I brought my little dollar store solar collector <laughs> that operates this sweet little flower. Um, but I, I would like to propose that um, we, I've not heard the discussion of putting new technology there in the interim as you remove the old. Um, that, <coughs> the idea of putting high-tech wind generators like the ones in Salinas, they do not kill birds and they're highly efficient. They use them in Europe all over. Um, and the, addition of, of new solar technology. We have big advances in the cost, the collection, and the storage. Um, even wave generation off the coast is a possibility. But the jobs, um, there will forever be jobs to take care of security and safe, safety of 33, 33 years of waste storage on the site. Um, there's no reason that the PG&E uh, could not look at putting some alternative energy in there as a replacement You've got the perfect transmission site, and I believe that you could then provide many of the jobs that will be leaving when people can um, change technologies a little bit. Um, how many alternative energy installations are currently on the site? None. Um, so I feel like it's been a failure from the nuclear industry at that on the site to not consider putting alternative energy to co coexist and add uh, lower the bundle of energy produced by a nuclear plant that produces waste. Thank you very much. Thank you. I doubt you should have made the point today. I don't know what to do. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Tyler Sight or Sight, Hermione Karam, Jennifer Tanyali. I'm a business developer and a former sheet metal worker for Local 104. Uh, here today to express my thoughts and opinions on the joint uh, proposal. Uh, I'd first like to say Diablo has not only uh, provided a safe workplace for many of our members uh, in our community, it has also given members a livable wage and a means to live uh, and raise families here on the Central Coast. Uh, it is unfortunate the plant will be closing. I feel the joint proposal will be <coughs> Uh, the key to retaining the members throughout its life, ensuring uh, the plant safety through the remainder of its operations, and ensuring workers will have uh, other career options when the uh, doors finally do shut. Uh, I am thankful for all the plant has had to offer, and hope the proposal can be the light at the end of the tunnel for everyone involved. Thank you. Hermina Karam, Jennifer Daniele, Jenna Gould. Your Honor, thank you for coming here to
to San Luis Obispo. My name is Ermina Kareem, and I'm the President and CEO of the San Luis Obispo Chamber of Commerce. With roots in this community that go back well over 100 years, our chamber currently represents over 1,400 members throughout the Central Coast who collectively employ more than 33,000 individuals. About 25% of our membership is outside of the city of San Luis Obispo and dispersed through every subregion of our county. Like many others throughout the community, the planned closure of Diablo Canyon Power Plant has been a chief concern for our chamber members. The economic future of our regional economy without the largest private sector employer in our community will certainly be significant. Overall, we feel that the joint proposal is both fair and reasonable as it addresses the needs of a diverse group of stakeholders and allows both time and resources for a thoughtful transition that impacts far greater than our region. Indeed, this closure, just as the operations of Diablo Canyon have had over the last 30 years, has statewide implications <coughs> that this joint proposal helps to address. When our chamber participated in the local CPUC hearing <coughs> about a year ago, we advocated for economic and community impacts to be included within the scope of the proceedings as the community is a direct stakeholder in what happens next. Since that time, the joint proposal has been amended to address the <coughs> economic and community impacts that we are very, and we are very supportive of this outcome. For several decades, our community has assumed both the economic benefits and the environmental risks of being home to a nuclear power plant serving the electricity needs throughout the state. The community mitigation element of this joint proposal provides resources to help our community <coughs> take the first step on the long path of restructuring our local economy and we ask that you approve the joint proposal as it ensures a safe and responsible transition for all parties. Thank you again for coming here to take input from our community. Jennifer Danielli, Janet Gould, Charlotte Gordon. Hi, good afternoon, Your Honor. Um, my name is Jennifer Danelli, and I'm a principal for San Luis Coastal School District at Baywood Elementary in Los Osos, and also a resident of Morro Bay. I, I love our community and our schools. Our schools are well respected and well loved by our parents, our students, and our community. And for many of our families, our schools are the reason they choose to live here in this low area. Um, we don't want that to change. Our school community and our school principals are concerned about the impact that the decommissioning of Diablo will have on our schools. We believe that the joint agreement negotiated by PG&E, San Luis Obispo County, Coalition of Cities, and San Luis Coastal Unified School District aligned practical common interests in order to safely and professionally transition from the closure of Diablo Canyon Nuclear Power Plant in 2024-2025. On behalf of the principals of San Luis Coastal, we support the joint agreement. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Janet Gould, Charlotte Gordon. After Ms. Gordon, I think we'll take a five minute stretch break. So. Good afternoon. I am a native of, my name is Janet Gould, and I'm a native of San Luis Obispo, and began teaching in the San Luis Coastal Unified School District over 20 years ago. I currently reside in Morro Bay, and am the principal of Delmar Elementary School in Morro Bay. Since it was announced that Diablo would be decommissioned, several parents and community members have come to me for information and expressed their concerns over the impact that closure will have on our school and community. Being a sounding board for concerns has been common among principals in our district, and they join me in supporting the joint proposal. All ratepayers have benefited from Diablo in the form of reduced energy cost, which is why it's appropriate for all ratepayers to support the financial cost associated with safely decommissioning the plant. While our community has benefited from the revenues generated from Diablo, we've also endured the risks associated with having a nuclear power plant in close proximity to our homes. <coughs> During the plant's operation, pg and has worked closely with our community to plan for and mitigate potential dangers, and trust has been built in our community. Through the decommissioning process, they have continued to work collaboratively to reach this joint proposal. <coughs> We've seen communities devastated where plants have closed without this type of collaborative effort. Approval of the joint agreement will inspire a needed confidence in a secure, highly specialized workforce for the plant's remaining years of operation and will create a safe, stable, and sustainable community for workers and residents surrounding the plant. I urge the PUC to approve this joint proposal. Thank you. Gordon, then we'll take a break. After the break, we'll start up with Robert Wolf.
Good afternoon. My name is Charlotte Gordon, and I'd like to speak briefly on two issues. First, as a retired Parks and Recreation professional, I would love to see the beautiful coastal property surrounding the Diablo Canyon nuclear site preserved as open space with eventual public access to trails and other possible recreational amenities. Secondly, I live in an area of very low water production. I'm out in the O'Connor Way, West Foothill area, and from uh, what we understand, the recycled water from the plant, um, at some point, there have been talks, at some point that might be routed to South County. We would like you to consider having um, access to that recycled water for other people who have low water production throughout the county. Thank you. All right, we'll take, let's we'll call it a seven minute break. We'll come back at the, uh, I believe Robert Wolf is next, followed by Torn, Don Ortiz Leg, and Sybil Ashley. Hello, thank you for having this hearing. My name is Robert Wolf. I live in San Luis Obispo. Um, one might ask uh, whether or not it really matters whether the plant is closed in 2025 or 2019. And one answer to that question would be, well, it doesn't really matter much unless, unless the decision is made to open, keep the plant open until 2025 and a serious accident happens in that time. And just think how bad you or whoever makes that decision would feel if that were the case. So all I'm saying is, for the sake of your own peace of mind and for the health and well-being of millions of Californians, please close the plan in 2019. Thank you. Thank you. Don, uh, Don Ortiz Lake, followed by Sybil Ashley, and then Jeff Buckingham. Is Don Ortiz Lake here? Nope. Let's move to Sybil Ashley. Thank you very much for this uh, opportunity. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. I'm speaking in support uh, of Mothers for Peace. If Fukushima was not a recent memory, perhaps we could justify closing Diablo Canyon slowly as to not upset the status quo. Unfortunately, five years later, the whole world knows that Fukushima's contamination is slow to fade. In the wake of violent storms in our own country, have we still learned nothing from the tragedy of Fukushima? All the money that PG&E has donated to the schools and communities of San Luis Obispo County will not do anything good if our citizens, marine life, and children are sick or dead. We don't want the employees of Diablo Canyon, past and present, to have to look in the mirror if they are one of the lucky ones and ask themselves, was this job worth it? With the current availability of renewable energy and its proven cost effectiveness, along with the opportunity for training and new jobs in this field, demanding the shutdown of Diablo Canyon in 2019 is, at the very least, a reasonable and compassionate request. Thank you very much. Thank you. Jeff, Jeff Buckingham, followed by Mike Brown, followed by Deborah Peterson. Good afternoon, Your Honor. My name is Jeff Buckingham. Uh, I have a cow calf operation near Los Sosos and own a business in San Luis Obispo. The 500 KV lines from Diablo Canyon across our ranch, and we've had the pleasure of cooperating with pg and &E as they maintain the transmission lines in their usual safe and efficient manner. In this situation, we've been able to observe pg and &E, and I've found this fine company does the right thing even when nobody's looking. We urge you to approve the joint proposal as written 
The parties have worked diligently to create a proposal that mitigates many of the important issues around the closing job of Canyon. Thank you. Mike Brown, Deborah Peterson, Linda Seeley. Your Honor, uh, my name is Mike Brown, and I'm the Government Affairs Director of the Coalition of Labor, Agriculture, and Business of both uh, San Luis Obispo County and Santa Barbara County, two separate organizations, sister organizations. And our membership is comprised, if you put the two together, of almost several thousand farmers, ranches, businesses of all type, professional firms, and uh, citizens. And uh, we're here today to support the joint proposal of PG&E. And uh, we believe that uh, this has not just benefits for the Central Coast, but uh, for the entire state of California. For one thing, it accelerates the achievement of the state's adopted goals for green energy. Um, secondly, it forestalls sudden economic dislocations, not just here, but uh, PG&E system covers, as you know, a substantial part of the state. It provides an orderly transition to the large amounts of green energy that PG&E uh, plans to acquire as part of the joint proposal and it does maintain, as you've heard this afternoon, uh, plant safety, both through the decommissioning process and after. It provides for public input with respect to the reuse of the site, which is, of course, one of the most spectacular oceanfront sites in the state of California. Um, and um, finally, and I think as you know, the uh, State Lands Commission permit for the use of cooling water is tied to this whole proposal. And if, if uh, it doesn't work, then their existing permit uh, would close down and the plant would have to close almost immediately. So for all these reasons, we hope that uh, the commission um, can uh, support this proposal. Thank you very much and we're available for questions if you have any. Uh, Deborah Peterson, Linda Seeley, and then I believe Ms. Um, Ortiz Lega is back. So let's do Peterson, Seeley, Ortiz Lega. Hi, I'm Debbie Peterson, and I want to thank you also for bringing the local hearings to us today. I'm a former mayor of Grover Beach. I'm a current city council member of the city of Grover Beach, but I'm speaking today as an individual, not on behalf of the city council. Uh, River Beach is a bedroom community. It's home to more union members than any other city in the county. And it also um, has as many non-owner occupied homes as our city of San Luis Obispo, which has all the students. Um, many of our residents depend on the outage for additional income to make ends meet. And we also house a lot of folks from out of town during the outage. Um, I wasn't on the council at the time. Um, that they uh, took a vote and decided not to participate with the other cities. Their decision uh, was made because they felt they didn't want to put city funds at risk. We have the lowest funds of, of all the cities in the county by engaging lawyers, and they also um, did not want to take action that would incre increase rates for any of our residents. As a result, however, uh, where the cities around us are receiving large settlements, um, Grover Beach has been dependent on the county's grace, and we're getting 192,000. If you compare that to the city next to us, Pismo Beach, which has 7,000 residents compared to our 13,000, Pismo Beach is getting 750,000. Arroyo Grande, on the other side of us, with uh, 17,000 residents, is getting 750,000 or thereabouts. So, um, to put it in perspective, Pismo Beach half the half population three times the money, and of all of these cities, uh, Rover Beach is probably more in need of economic development than any of them, and will will possibly be harder hit when you're thinking of individuals. So I've asked many times, is there anything you can do to redress this? And I've been told every time, no, sorry, it's too late. There's nothing you can do. So effectively, you're the court of last resort. So I would just like to ask you if you could take a look 
and make sure that that 85 million allocated to the cities and county is equitably sped, uh, spread. I'd ask you to reconsider that decision. Grover Beach made the right decision, but they got the wrong result. I think they really were wanting to look after the interests of their people, but ultimately, by not joining in the lawsuit, they, they failed to do that in this case. So um, I thank you again, and um, ask that you reconsider that one. Thank you. Uh, Linda Seeley, followed by Deborah, Do excuse me, Don Ortiz Lake. Uh, I'm Linda Seeley. I live in Los Hosos. Thank you so much for coming here today. Um, I am a spokesperson for San Luis Obispo Mothers for Peace, but I'm speaking as an individual today. Um, I wanted to talk about the process of um, storing the uh, highly radioactive nuclear waste out at Diablo Canyon for the foreseeable future. Um, under uh, a Supreme Court decision, uh, apparently you have the um, uh, ability to, uh, to order that the, um, ca the canisters be stored in a more robust way. They're going to be there for a long time. Um, there is a principle called uh, hardened on-site storage in which uh, the canisters are burned and spread further apart and then there are also there are also different kinds of canisters that can be ordered. You can order pg and &E to make that facility um, a robust facility unlike all of the others in the United States. Um, the PG&E will order the kind of canisters that it has to do under the order of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. And it, they always, you know, all profit-making organizations go for the, the lowest cost that they can. Our canisters there right now, I believe, are a half-inch thick steam, stainless steel, and they are exposed to um, the elements. Um, there, in, in 2014, the um, Nuclear Energy Institute did a cursory examination of the canisters and found the conditions for cracking on one of the canisters that had deposits of calcium chloride on it. And that is not um, acceptable uh, with these kinds of things because uh, calcium or magnesium or whatever salts uh, can uh, lead to corrosion and eventually into cracking. We also, uh, the, as I understand it, they monitor the, um, the radiation from the canisters from the dry cask storage um, quarterly, um, and uh, we need to have real-time monitoring. All of these things you could order in order for them to recoup their costs um, when when they're shutting down. Um, the other, one more thing I wanted to say is in terms of economic vitality, we could, there could be a manufacturing um, facility made to make these uh, robust, more robust canisters, and they are made all over the world. They're just not allowed, or they're not made, or they're not used here in San Luis, or all over, the United States, actually, except at Prairie Island. Um, so anyway, there are many, many things that you can do to order PG&E to, to do a safer job out there. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Don Ortiz Leg, and followed by Whitney Zentesi and Sharon Ripner. Hello, Fred Allen. Thank you so much for allowing me to come back up. Um, yes, my name is John Ortiz Leg. I live here in San Luis Obispo. I speak on behalf of myself. I, I, I want to say that, you know, for 32 years, Diablo Canyon has generated clean, carbon-free energy in a reliable manner. And that's thanks to the men and women of Diablo Canyon. And um, I do work in the utility-scale solar business for the last eight years, and I can tell you that one thing I've learned is that people take energy for granted. And it's uh, not quite as easy to generate and to deliver energy as people think. And so I, I salute the men and women at Diablo Canyon, and I think that the compensation package for those workers 
is something that definitely needs to be um, addressed and, and made sure. That's why I support the joint proposal. I think it's, it's a great proposal. Um, I commend the State of California, the Public Utilities Commission, Diablo, and all of the stakeholders that are involved in this for ensuring that until the very last day we have those workers that are skilled in this technology and have been part of the plant. Retaining them is incredibly important. Um, so that's one thing. The other thing is that many states across the United States are trying to address their nuclear situations. California has addressed it. This proposal is fantastic. I commend you all for doing it. Um, I think that we're on our way, and I want to thank you for coming here. Uh, when, uh, Whitney Santessi, Sharon Rippner, Elizabeth Bruce, Bruce, Bruce A. Uh, Whitney Santessi. Uh, let's move to Sharon Rippner. Thank you. I'm Sharon Ripner, and I'm a resident of Squire Canyon, which is fairly close to Diablo Canyon. I'm here representing myself and my husband. As property owners, we are quite concerned and have been for a long time about Diablo Canyon. We're very grateful that there's a plan in place to close it. However, we'd like to see it close sooner. Uh, we're very aware that we are so-called on borrowed time for having a very large earthquake in the Southern California area that could stretch as far as our area and, and really compromise the safety of the plant. The sooner it's closed down, the less toxic waste that they have to worry about and we have to worry about being safely stored. So for these reasons, uh, we would really appreciate the plant being closed by 19, or 2019. And, um, the, the other thing is I'm very concerned about global warming and I, and I work in that area. And when I hear that people say that um, this is a clean energy, carbon free, I agree it's carbon free after the plant's built. It's carbon free, but it's not clean. We have toxic waste that is, a, that is accumulating on a daily basis. And I would really like to have that stopped as soon as possible. Thank you. Elizabeth Bruce. Bruce. I love the way you say it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, followed by Andrea Seastrand. Thank you. My name is Elizabeth Bruce. I'm a member of Mothers for Peace. And when I heard you were coming, I immediately dove into all the materials I had collected. I think most of us who work with Mothers for Peace are master collectors of information. And I thought, why should I write something new when it's already been written very well? The point I'm going to make is a reinforcement to the last speaker's point, which is the uncertainty of the seismic activity underlying the Alto Canyon. That uncertainty also could impact the uh, containers for the waste that is situated there, even after PG&E closes down, the waste is going to be there and seismic threat continues. So I came across a few comments by uh, some local folks who are active in the government, San Luis Obispo County Supervisor Bruce Gibson and former state Senator Sam Lakesley said that the utility, talking about PG&E, consistently evaluate seismic data as it has collected around the plant in a way that reinforces its claim that the plant is safe despite considerable uncertainty in the data. The position I'm taking, and I think many from Mother's Cake take, is that we, the sooner we leave, the better, because the seismic threat continues. In December, Blakesley told the U.S. Senate Committee that PG&E has consist consistently downplayed the seismic threat, and a more conservative approach to the problem would have been to come up with significant larger shaking calculations. 
The issue of seismic threat, I think, comes to our mind now as we are facing what is happening on the East Coast, and Virgin Islands, and so forth. Our, nation, our world is undergoing great changes, and we are here sitting in a situation where there is that seismic threat. So we, as a member of Mothers for Peace, I'm not a spokes spokesperson, but I hope that 1999 is the target date for removal of the, everyone from PG&E. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Andrea Seastrand, um, and then if Whitney Sentesi is here. Yes. Well, good afternoon, and thank you for coming to San Luis Obispo. Just a note, uh, my name is Andrea Seastrand. Oh, I need the mic. Help other people. I can hear you, but I can't. Yeah. All right. Um, thank you for being here. And uh, I'm Andrea Seastrand. I'm a former member of the State Assembly. And I'm a former congresswoman from this area in the 90s. And uh, I live in Grover Beach, so I'm very concerned about uh, the closure of Diablo, uh, plant, the Diablo plant. I've always been a supporter of nuclear power, and in particular for uh, the plant. I'm very concerned about the future with the closure and what's going to mean to all of us, not only in the state, but also here on the Central Coast. I'm concerned about the shortage of electricity. I'm concerned about the energy costs that may, uh, may go up. I'm also concerned about what it's going to mean uh, after the closure, say, in nine years, uh, to our economy here in San Luis Obispo. Uh, we're going to take a direct hit and I think it's probably been stated over and over today about the 1,500 high-paying jobs and the other jobs, uh, some 1,400 that are uh, second level. Overall, I'm not too, uh, what can I say, uh, enamored with the future of community choice aggregation. Again, I'm coming down to worrying about what this will mean as far as costs uh, for energy for the people in our central coast and the state of California. Again, whatever happens, uh, I'd like to see it stay open, but I certainly agree with the Tribune today, who had an editorial that says, the pg &E's plan to close Diablo Canyon deserves support. So I would ask you to support the proposal as it's been put forth. Thank you so much. What needs that does he hear? Good afternoon. Oh, Hello, my name is Whitney Santizi. I am here today speaking as a resident of Los Osos in San Luis Obispo County. I want to thank you for this opportunity to speak. Over the years, our community has taken on all the risk associated with having a nuclear power plant here. We have done this while the entire state benefited from the energy created at the plant. Now we, the people of San Luis Obispo County, will shoulder the burden associated with this closure. What will happen to the spent fuel, to the land? What will happen to our economy? What will happen to our schools, our emergency services? Will we be left to bear the burden of this on our own? I ask that you consider what is fair. Is it fair to consider the people, or it is fair to consider the people of San Luis Obispo County. It is fair to ensure that our economy remains stable. It is fair to consider our safety, our health, not just today, but long after the plant closes. These issues have been addressed in the settlement agreement and the joint proposal. This agreement and the proposal will at least help lessen the burden we must carry for years, even decades, beyond the closure of the Alba Canyon power plant. We have taken on the risk of having a nuclear power plant here and can, will continue to carry that burden. Please think about us. The people of San Luis Obispo County deserve your consideration. I would also like to mention that, and I'm sure other people have mentioned, that the Tribune, our local daily newspaper, endorsed the proposal today. So I would I hope that you would consider it and endorse it as well. Thank you. Thank you. So what I have now is I have a list of um, speakers who are affiliated with parties. I know that that has not been Having those people go to, at the end has not been perfectly uh, 
adhere to, but we do have more speakers associated with parties. Do we have anyone else who is not just speaking on their own? Okay, if not, we'll go ahead with this list. Parties starting with Mr. Gene Nelson, followed by Joseph Ivora and Edward Taylor. Good afternoon. Let's try that again. Uh, good afternoon, Judge Allen. Uh, Gene Nelson, Governor of the U.S. Senate for California's Supreme Nuclear Power. We're reading from my prepared comments for the time allotted. Additional details are found in yesterday's archived interviews at KCBX and KCOY. Oh, slow down a little, makes it hard to All right, okay. Uh, later, uh, CGMP will file an ex parte notice for the complete prepared comments attached as an ex parte communication for all members of the uh, A1608006 service list. Thank you for scheduling this public participation hearing in San Luis Obispo today. I believe that we're at a historic crossroads regarding California energy policy. Will it be business as usual, or will it be embracing a zero carbon future? I am optimistic that the CPUC will deny PG&E's application uh, to abandon Diablo Canyon Power Plant as not in the public interest. Furthermore, I'm requesting that CPUC accept CGMP's August 25, 2017 motion for official notice despite PG&E's recently filed comments to the contrary, which appear to support PG&E's goal of having the CPUC not consider CGMP's relevant information. Here are some highlights from CGMP's recent motion. Instead of granting PG&E's instant application, CG&E already requested in their testimony that PG&E restart... Mr. Nelson, if you wish to make public comments, I don't really want to have legal motions re-argued here. This, okay, is I, I, I'm, I'm, this is novel stuff that I'm going to be talking about. If you'll give me just a moment to talk, please. All right, so I'm asking that they restart a CPUC application A10122 for full cost recovery. Furthermore, uh, since that was dismissed without prejudice by the PUC on December 21, 2011, Furthermore, CGMP suggests that a clawback provision be implemented to capture PG&E's capital cost recovery associated with the accelerated depreciation taken to date um, so that PG&E ratepayers would receive a clearly demarcated Diablo Canyon accelerated depreciation rebate on their power bills over the remaining useful lifetime of Diablo Canyon. This revision in capital cost recovery policy will discourage California investor-owned utilities from continuing to act wastefully, like Vance Packer talked about in the Waste Makers book, you probably remember. Um, this is contrary to public interest, and has been amply documented in some recent Los Angeles Time investigative reports where plants were retired far in advance of the end of their useful lifetime. And then going on to uh, energy, uh, renewable energy, uh, Perhaps Helms Pump Storage could be served as an emission-free means to integrate solar and wind into California's grid uh, instead of using back-down mode. We really don't know why PG&E is making such modest use of that. In summary, CGMP is requesting the CPUC deny PG&E's application, a much more thorough environmental review of PG&E's application to abandon Diablo Canyon under California's IRP process would likely arrive at the same conclusion that CGMP already has. Keep, yeah, keep California's clean energy champion money for at least another 20 years to help power California and protect the Central Coast's economy and environment for another two decades. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just to clarify, um, and other parties, you don't need to file an ex party for comments at today's meeting because this was publicly noticed. Okay, thank you. Next up we have Joseph Ivora, followed by Edward Taylor and Kara Woodruff. Hello, Judge. My name is Joe Ivora. I'm out here to defend the Alpha Canyon and defend nuclear power in general. The Alpha Canyon is a uh, has been has been has not been fairly treated by the California. They don't get any credit for being reliable, for being low cost, for being zero emissions, or for the so-called renewables, they get subsidized. And the other thing does not. I think to 
to be fair, if it would be subsidized, it, it would probably continue on. But anyway, to talk more about the Apple Canyon, um, talk, some people are talking about the unsafeness of nuclear power. No one has died from nuclear power, from commercial nuclear power, in, in the Northern Hemisphere that I know, in Canada or in the U.S. Not one person, not one person, not one person has died from from so-called spent fuel, they call it waste. It's not waste, it's unspent fuel. It can be reused, it can be processed in like other countries. So there's a lot of misconception about nuclear power. And Diablo Canyon is also a lifesaver. It saves a lot of lives. Any, any power plant is a lifesaver. Fossil fuel puts all this waste into the air. It, it causes uh, emphysema, uh, asthma, lung cancer. In fact, in Canada, they, they, uh, they celebrate nuclear power. In Ontario, Canada, I, saw, I just saw a film on it where they, their, their rates of uh, asthma has gone way down because of the power plants. So, uh, uh, Devil Can is, produces 9 to 10 percent of California's power. It's got to be taken care of. And 21 percent of the clean power, so how are we going to replace it with just solar and wind? I, mean, I don't think the math adds up. Um, and okay, yeah, thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. Edward Taylor, Kara Woodruff, and William, is it Glug, Glugie? Glug? I was the last name you called. You want me to talk now? Um, it depends on whether any of the others are here. Uh, is Mr. Taylor here? See, I'm not seeing Mr. Taylor's Kara Woodruff here. Yes, I'm here. Okay, let's do Ms. Woodruff and then you, sir. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Thank you for coming back here today. Uh, my name is Kara Woodruff. I'm here representing the Friends of Wild Cherry Canyon. And I provided you a little bit earlier a map of the lands that surround Diablo just to your left, so I'll refer to that. Um, as you know, during the closure proceedings, you heard from many groups and entities um, about the conservation of public access to these Diablo lands. And as you can see from your map, they encompass about 12,000 acres that surround the plan itself. And everything on the map in pink is owned by pg and &E, is considered the Diablo lands. If you look at the southern eastern portion, that's Wild Cherry Canyon. The underlying fee is also owned by pg and &E, but long-term leaseholds are held by home fed. Um, during the closure proceedings, all of the discussion about the Diablo lands were tabled. As you may recall, um, all that discussion was put off because pg and &E committed to make no decision on the reuse or sale of the land surrounding the plant until it had completed a decommissioning plan with input from the community. So the organizations that are really pushed for conservation have respected that commitment. We've stepped back and we are waiting. And just a reminder today to let you know that we're very interested when those decommissioned hearings should proceed We'll be back engaged in making the case that um, when pg and &E came in and purchased these lands to operate the plant, now the plant's going away. We have an opportunity for a terrific legacy for the future of the land, for the people, locals, tourism would be great for the local economy too. So just a reminder, um, thank you for um, giving us a place at the table, and we will be back during decommission. Thanks. Thank you, Judge Allen. I appreciate you coming here and listening to us today. Now, I, I've been reading this morning about the PUC, and it, it's, it's a, a, an agency to protect the public and think long range. Long range. What we're hearing today is a lot of short range thinking. There will be a lot of profit in closing Diablo Canyon in the solar industry, in the wind industry, natural gas industry, and those profit centers have found a way to 
uh, put fear into people, put uh, pressure for a positive uh, result by the PUC, saying closure will happen. Notice that the, the talking points are out there that a lot of people say it's going to close when they start to talk about it. It hasn't been decided that it will close. Um, but the, the PUC, when I read their mission statement and associated statements, uh, it talks long range, environmental enhancement, the health of the people, the health of the economy. So I ask you to think in those terms, not these shorter terms that we're hearing uh, now. Um, I urge rejection of this joint proposal. Now people talk about it being fair and in good faith. I can't believe that these terms are used. This thing was hatched in total secrecy. pg e gathered the worst opponents of nuclear power behind closed doors. Cities didn't know, counties didn't know, school districts didn't know and they hatched this plan. Now, if it's such a great plan, and so fair and balanced and good faith, why didn't they just do it out in the public and invite uh, governments to come and, and participate in developing this plan? No, this was not a, a fair, good faith plan at all. It was absolutely the opposite. Um, so, and global warming has been mentioned twice the, by my count. Global warming is a huge threat to Earth. We're at 409 parts per million CO2 now. Unbelievable. Science has said never, ever pass 350, whatever you do. We flew past that fast. Now you say, what about the other countries contributing to this? I'd like to see California be a leader in turning that around, and the United States be a leader in turning that around. Instead, China is grabbing the leadership and building a lot of reactors. And they know what they're doing. And uh, we have government, we have corporations. Some say we're a corporatocracy now. We're not a democracy. Uh, I begin to believe that. But watch out, corporations, because there's no uh, pass for you on global warming. You're going to be among the early victims. So if you love capitalism, and you'll love helping gas company, natural gas companies fight global warming with something that is carbon free and, and huge, huge power source. I don't care what it can be, it can be fusion, yeah. hamsters on wheels. You know, if, it, if, it, if it's big and it can replace fossil fuel, I'm for it. Thank you very much. My time is, my time is up. Thanks very much, Judge Allen. Thank you. Next, uh, Rochelle Becker, David Weissman, then Eric Prater. Good afternoon, Judge Allen, and thank you for coming to San Luis Obispo. Um, one thing that we um, really failed to point out as strongly as we could in our testimony, and um, I'd like to reiterate it again today, is, and other people have as well, is the risk that this county continues to live with. There are plenty of other power stations in PG&E service territory and in the state of California. But no other power stations come with this. These are my potassium iodide pills. Just in case there's a radioactive release at my power generation station, this is what I have to, I guess, block radiation in my thyroid just in case I need it. But there are no other power stations that have to provide this sort of medication when you live by them. And this sort of medication remains. This plant will close, but the reason that we have these potassium iodide pills remains, the radiation remains. And so I strongly urge you and this commission to approve this settlement, to get this process going. So as we phase out this plant, we have to live with this as least as possible. David Weisman, followed by Eric Prater, followed by Ellen Sepper. Shepherd. Uh, good afternoon, Judge David Weisman of the Alliance for Nuclear Responsibility. Just a, a brief follow-on to uh, Ms. Becker's statement: uh, the potassium iodide is perhaps a less visible sign of the risk that San Luis Obispo residents 
bear in response to the benefits delivered by Diablo Canyon, uh, one that lives in a medicine cabinet or somewhere not seen. But there's a slightly more visible one available to the public, though somewhat mysterious, and, and you may see these here during your visit, the siren information uh, notices. Uh, the first time I ever encountered one was the first time I ever went to Morro Bay almost 30 years ago, long before I lived here, and I closed the hotel room door and I saw this on the door behind it. I had just moved out from New York City and I, I had no idea what that could possibly be referring to. And now we know, and um, this is something that greets the visitors here that makes it very unique and is a unique reminder of what this county has undertaken in exchange for what is provided all this time and as a reminder that will remain as the legacy of the spent fuel remains in this county as well. And it's one that the visitors take away as a mental souvenir of San Luis County as well. So I'll just put that as an additional reinforcement to uh, Ms. Baker's earlier comments. Thank you very much. Thank you. Eric Prater, followed by Ellen Sepper, followed by Catherine Pison rogers Good evening, Judge Allen. Thanks for having us tonight. My name is Eric Prater. I am superintendent of the San Luis Coastal Unified School District. I'm also a resident of San Luis Obispo and parent of three sons who attend schools in our district. We are all grateful to be part of such an amazing and thoughtful community. Thank you for hosting this second public forum to better understand public sentiment and the complexity involved in this carefully crafted joint agreement. I was a participant of this proposal, and I fully understand what is at stake for our school district and community. Tonight, you will hear from members of our school board. You have already previously heard from two of our principals, uh, who have the daily responsibility of educating nearly 8,000 of our students in the communities of Avila, Edna Valley, Los Osos, Morro Bay, and San Luis Obispo. PG&E, in my assessment, has done an excellent job negotiating an agreement that will allow the most impacted agencies in San Luis Obispo County to transition to a safe, educationally and economically viable future following the closure of the Double Canyon Nuclear Power Plant. This agreement, we believe, reflects the long-term best interests of the ratepayers and our community. It could also serve as a best practice template for other communities across the country who encounter similar challenges. Thank you. Thank you. Ellen Sefer, Catherine Eisen Rogers, John Ashbaugh. Good afternoon, Your Honor. My name is Ellen Sheffer, and I'm a trustee on San Luis Coastal Unified School District Board. Uh, my children, now young adults, were fortunate to attend school here in San Luis Obispo from kindergarten through graduation. Although we live with the constant low-level concern of either a malfunction at the plant or ongoing worry about nuclear waste storage at the site, I will readily admit that we benefited greatly from the revenue the plant generated by way of unitary taxes that have supported our school district and the community at large. Several years ago, I served as a community member on the committee that made recommendations for budget cuts to the then superintendent when PG&E went through its reorganization. I saw the extremely difficult choices that had to be made at that time which also included closing three of our elementary school campuses. We're hopeful and confident that approval of the joint agreement presented to you will allow us to avoid such sudden, sudden and deep and harmful cuts to our students, their employees, and, to our, and their families who rely on the district, just as PG and E employees have relied on the plant. We're all in this together. And approval of the joint agreement will incentivize the necessary and skilled employees of the plant to remain because our district will be able to maintain excellent, engaging, and innovative schools for their children as well as all of our students to attend. Criti crucially, approval of the joint agreement will allow for a responsible and strategic transition for our school district that, as Dr. Prater indicated, educates nearly 8,000 students 3,500 adults through our adult school programs and employs 800 people and is an active partner with over 75,000 residents in the broader communities of 
Avila, Edna Valley, Los Osos, Morro Bay, and San Luis Obispo. I believe that the approval of the joint proposal will help the school district deal with the loss of revenue in a thoughtful manner, causing the least possible upheaval and disruption to the employees of both PG&E and the employees and families of San Luis Coastal and mitigate the impact on our students who are our future. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Catherine Eisen Rogers, John Ashbaugh, and Mark Bookman. Bookman. Good afternoon, Judge Helen. I hope you're ready for a seventh week stretch about now. Oh, yes. uh, my name is Catherine Eisen Drath Rogers. I'm a school board trustee and a mom. Um, San Luis Coastal Unified School District shoulders a significant safety burden. Many of our schools, our employees, our families, and students live within just a few miles of the plant. Our entire district is in the protective action zones. So however remote the risk may be, it is part of our daily lives. My two sons recently graduated from these schools, but I can still remember as a volunteer on their elementary school campus, uh, when we had drills in case of an emergency, the children would be all gathered onto the playground and, and then they'd be loaded onto buses and the buses were to take them in the event of a real emergency up to Paso Robles to the fairgrounds where they would be reunited with their parents. And that experience of watching them board that bus and, and go up theoretically to uh, Paso Robles uh, was very unsettling. And, I know you're way too young to have done the duck and cover during the Cuban Missile Crisis, <laughs> but uh, yeah, kind of felt like that. Um, so over time, um, as I got to know some of the parents and the uh, employees of, of Diablo Canyon, I developed a level of confidence in them uh, because of their commitment to safety. So eventually I was able to sleep at night. But uh, the Diablo Canyon nuclear power plant um, will remain part of our emergency crisis plan even after its closure. So it's vitally important that adequate resources are made available to retain and support a capable and confident work force at the plant through the closure timeframe. So I urge you uh, to keep these conscientious employees on the job and keep our children safe by approving this proposal. Thank you. Uh, let's see, John Ashbaugh, Mark Oakman, Chris Unger, and then Guy Savage. Uh, Judge Allen, I'm not a party to the proceeding, and if you don't object, I would prefer to let the school board members speak directly. Uh, and it, is that, is that okay? I'll come back. Either way, I was letting you go first because you're not a party, so I was putting you oh, ahead yeah. of, of a couple more of the school board members. Either order doesn't matter. I to think me. it's important for them. It's okay, important. let's go with um, Mark Bookman. And Chris Hunkar. Thank you for this opportunity to be here. I'm Mark Buckman. I'm a school board member uh, with the San Luis Coastal Unified School District, the father of two San Luis Coastal graduates, and now a grandfather of a kindergarten student who's in our public schools. Um, in the past, I was the spokesperson for the, uh, for the public schools in this county um, during um, the Diablo Canyon uh, <coughs> Regulatory Commission drills. I was a board member not too long ago when the board was forced to cut $4 million in one year to our crashing economy. I was faced with horrible choices that were made in less than a year. Today, was, I ask that the PUC members remember this. The students today will be the workforce, future parents, business owners, and leaders who will stay and live in this community. This agreement will ensure a smooth eight-year transition for students and their education. Again, this joint proposal will allow the school district to handle this complicated transition strategically and not in a rushed and disjointed manner. I support this agreement on behalf of the students and thank you again for this opportunity. Chris Ungar, and then Guy Savage, and then John Ashbaugh. I'm Chris Unger, and I'm a 17 year board member from the San Luis Coastal Board of Trustees. I'm clerk of the board and a resident of Los Osos. The CPUC should approve the joint agreement for the reasons stated by the members of our school community. While all PG&E and ratepayers have benefited from the energy produced by Diablo Canyon over the past three decades, the populations living near the 
plant, including Avalon Bay, San Luis Obispo, Morro Bay, and Los Osos have absorbed and will continue to absorb the greatest risk. The cost to the ratepayers borne by the joint agreement to maintain essential public services and high quality schools in San Luis Coastal pales in comparison to the consequences certain to come with a mass exodus of highly specialized employees and the corresponding impact on our local economy and community. Thank you very much. Guy Savage, followed by John Ashbach. Good afternoon, Your Honor, and thank you for allowing the public to meet and other parties of the joint uh, proposal with this opportunity to speak. My name is Guy Savage. I'm the acting uh, county administrator for the county of San Luis Obispo. Importantly for my testimony, I would add that I'm a resident of northern Santa Barbara County, not of San Luis Obispo County. Out of respect for you and your time, I will not repeat the words of Assemblyman Cunningham, Supervisor Adam Hill, City Manager Katie Victig, or Superintendent Eric Prater, or the members of our public safety folks. Uh, my primary comment today um, has to do with prior testimony you heard from a member of the City of Santa Maria Chamber of Commerce. Uh, while it is true that the city is not part of our joint proposal, um, myself and my colleague, colleagues are working to ensure that the impacts to Northern Santa Barbara County, my home, will be covered in our economic impact analysis. The joint proposal, as you know, um, is strongly supported by the county as it encourages the approval, or um, excuse me, uh, as it encourages the, the smooth transition of planned operations into a post Diablo Canyon economy and addresses the risk to our community from nuclear fuels. Again, thank you for this opportunity to speak and for taking the time and initiative to come to our, back to our community so that all of our voices can be heard. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Ashbaugh. Yes, thank you, Judge Allen. My name is John Ashbaugh, and uh, I'm here to speak primarily in support of the joint proposal. Um, yeah, I am not a party, as I mentioned earlier. I, I was sort of a party uh, a few months ago when I was a member of the San Francisco City Council and the work to speak for them, either then or now. <laughs> but uh, I, uh, I have uh, some intimate familiarity with the, with the, the site, with the plant, not the plant as such, but I was in fact running on that uh, property just last weekend with a wild Chevy Ultra run on only five miles myself. But uh, I, I am a history teacher at Hancock College. Uh, and as such, I've studied the history of this plant. It's a very, you know, very storied plant, uh, the, the site itself. Uh, I, uh, I think it's important that uh, I always respect the decision by PG&E and the other parties to de defer decisions about the land use, ultimately, for the site until after the decommissioning plan is done. But I do think that the decommissioning plan uh, should be done in recognition of the uh, important role that the Alba Canyon nuclear plant has played in our county's history. Uh, it remains the largest construction project ever undertaken in our county's history. Uh, I think the plant itself, uh, what will remain of it after the decommissioning process, uh, deserves recognition as a national engineering monument. And I believe that the site itself, the 12,000 acres that surround the plant, uh, deserves consideration as a future uh, national seashore on the lines of Point Reyes National Seashore or Acadia National Park in Maine. Um, in short, I think there's a great future that awaits that plant um, in spite of all the turmoil that surrounded it during its, uh, its very uh, um, troubled rollout back in the 70s and 80s. And I think we must uh, always keep that in mind as we go into the decommissioning process. Thank you for considering my views. That completes the speakers who have signed up to speak. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak? Seeing none, thank you very much for attending. Thank you for your input. And this public participation hearing is adjourned.